G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. For some time now I've been using this temporary arrangement to blue screws, but I've got quite a few parts to blue over the next few months, so in this video I make a more permanent version. The idea behind a tray full of brass chips is that it helps to spread the heat evenly over the whole part, so it's a great way to get a uniform colour but I like to have something a bit more convenient than a vice grip holding it all together. Before we get on to making it though, I'd like to show you the very first bluing pan I made before I really understood what was required. There's a few things that I did wrong when making it that are worth pointing out. For one thing, the brass is too thin, so the heat change on the plate is much too fast. But the big mistake I made was to put too many large holes in it. I can't really recall what I had in mind when I did that, but it was a bad idea. All it did was remove even more mass from the plate, and the holes permit the flame to lick around the sides of the part and ruin the colour. It does have a few redeeming features though. The legs holding it off the bench were a good idea, although they've oxidised quite a bit from the heat, so I might try making those from brass this time and see if it makes any difference. The handle is fine too, so I'll cut that off and reuse it. I'm also going to make two versions of the tray that can screw onto the end of the handle as required. One will be the more permanent version of the brass shavings tray I just spoke of, and the other will be a plate version with holes in it for screws, this time with smaller holes. And I can also make more variations on the idea in future and reuse that handle. I'm going to make the trays using this ring of brass left over from making the barrel and these two discs left over from other projects. The feet will be turned from this brass rod. So let's get started. The first thing I did was cut off the handle. Now the handle is just a hardwood dowel from the hardware store, mounted on a length of steel rod. And as I recall, when I made it, I formed a short tang on the end of the steel rod that was a good fit inside the dowel. I then formed a thread on the end of the handle. The feet for the bluing pan are a reasonably straightforward part to make, with a taper on one end and a thread on the other. And I quite like holding small parts like this with an ER collet. The opposing features will be closer to being concentric and it gives a much better grip on the part than the three jaw chuck. I started out by forming the tapered profile, setting up the lathe to cut a 10 degree included angle. Once I'd formed that tapered section, I extended the stock to mark out the other dimensions and then parted off. The part was then remounted the other way around to form the threads. Ok, now onto the trays. The tray that will hold the shavings is fabricated from two parts that are silver soldered together, so I spent quite a bit of time getting the surfaces clean and well fluxed before making the join.
all of the outside surfaces now need a good trim and to do that I need the part running reasonably true before making the cut. Another great job for the bump centering tool. So with the shavings tray mostly complete, I moved on to the flat tray, which is really just a simpler version of the same thing. All it needed was to have the surfaces cleaned up while it was being held on a super glue arbor. Both of the parts were then marked out and the positions of the holes lightly punched. And I'm extending those marking lines beyond the hole positions. I'm going to use them to help me align the part on the mill vise later. Each of the holes were then drilled and tapped on the mill. Now I'm going to lightly rivet the ends of the feet once they've been screwed in place, so I'm forming a decent countersink on the top side to give the metal somewhere to flow as it's displaced. And that's all of the bits and pieces complete, so let's give it a try. In good quality clock and watch making, heat bluing is traditionally used as a final surface finish on some steel parts. As the part is heated, an oxide forms on the surface. The thickness of the oxide is directly related to the temperature of the part. The hotter it gets, the thicker the layer. The colour comes from a light effect called thin film interference. To get a uniform colour, it's essential that the thin film of oxide is uniform in thickness across the whole part, which in turn means that the temperature must be uniform, hence all of the effort in making this bluing tray. The colours move through a range, starting at a light straw and then passing through brown, purple and blue to a light grey, after which the thin film effect is no longer visible. The composition of the steel, the cleanliness and surface finish all play a role in the way the oxide forms and so can directly influence the quality of the final colour. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later. And if this is your first Click Spring video, thanks for checking it out. Be sure to subscribe for more home machine shop videos like this one. If you're looking for some new projects for your lathe or mill, then take a moment to visit clickspringprojects.com where you'll find the plans for this and several other projects available for download. And finally, if you'd like to help with the creation of these videos, then have a look at the ClickSpring Patreon page. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.